Hello. Today we're going to be using this nice little plate with the hole in the middle. <laughs> it's called a ribbon block or ribbon board. And it's used for the trimming of um, your brim, your brim trim. So it's basically the ribbon that goes on the widest um, outer part of your hat. Okay, it's gonna look much neater than this, than what I'm showing you. So let's get it looking neat. Now, the tools we're going to need are our ribbon, the most popular ribbon used, size ribbon used for the um, brim trim is uh, the number five ribbon. This is seven eighths of an inch. And it's called grow grain, but it's the type of grow grain that doesn't have a border. The grow grain ribbon is ruffled. Can you see it there? You see how it has those ridges there? That's what you wanna have. You don't wanna have any hard borders. They say that if it has the hard borders, it's hard to swirl it, it's hard to uh, curve it and keep it curved. Um, I haven't tried any other ribbon, <laughs> but this is what the experts say. Uh, you can get it from, I guess they say it's a Petersham grain ribbon. Okay, all my hatters know what I'm talking about out there. Okay, and now you do too, okay? So this, these are the materials we're going to need, all right? Okay, so we already mentioned our ribbon. <clears throat> I would use some of your millinery um, tacks. They're short, they're not long, and we're going to need scissors, saran wrap, and a water bottle, and also a steamer. Okay, so Let's start off by putting saran wrap. One thing I want to say, you might be saying, why is this circle here? Normally, this would go on top of a hat stand or a milliner's stand uh, or a brim stand, okay? Something that looks like this. But this stand was from another company, therefore, it's too small for this to keep this elevated I um, went back and ordered a stand from the same company that I got this from and that's what often happens companies who make these tools their stands don't necessarily go with everyone's blocks all right so that order is in it hasn't arrived yet so we are going to make do without it. The show must go on. All right, so now we're going to be putting our saran wrap around our block. And the reason why we do this is because we want to preserve our blocks, our wood blocks, because they get wet um, from either water, steam, and we know what water does to wood over time. It can crack it. Yeah. Okay. I love this thing because it has a handle, the saran wrap. It has a, or I should say cling wrap. I think saran wrap is a brand, right? <laughs> cling wrap. Um, yeah. And once I put this on here, I'm going to leave it on here. You don't have to necessarily take off your wrappings. I don't think, right? Do you think water would get in between here and make it wet? I don't believe so. We'll see. We'll see what it does. All right. Because I'm like, I would use a lot of saran wrap all the time. Okay. So 
now that we have that covered with saran wrap, now what we're going to do, I've already pre-cut my ribbon, creating a hole in the middle. I'm gonna do that on the other end here. This is so that you don't get any awkward edges once the two ends meet. You don't get anything sticking out. That's kind of funky type of cut. Let's see if we can make that more cleaner there. And then you just use a little fray glue. Something light. I'm all about using, this is called fray stop. I'm all about using non-toxic glue in this business. You know, my mom, she got a, um, she bought a hat that had a tag that said this hat could be cancerous. She was like, Rita, why in the world would, how can this hat be cancerous? Well, when I looked it up, I said, well, let me research it. And come to find out it's the chemicals used in the hat stiffeners um, that, you know, when the chemical is broken down, it, it's, it can be toxic. So just be careful, you know, when you're making these hats, your hard brimmed hats, um, you know, you are aware of the type of chemicals and adhesives and stiffeners that you're using. Yes, there, is, there are non-toxic stiffeners, and you know, we'll go into that um, in a future video. But just wanted to mention that as a side point. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wet my, um, my ribbon so that I can stretch it a little bit. This is a new water bottle that I got, guys. And, oh, <laughs> it just shoots out water. Oh my God. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, that was funny. You see that? Oh my goodness. What just happened here? <laughs> So this is an automatic water bottle. It doesn't have the handle, the manual pump. You just hold on to it and it just shoots out water. Well, beware. Oh my goodness. It comes out like a water hose. I'm gonna get some paper towel. Lord. Well, that was unexpected. I gotta admit, a little fun, a little entertaining. We weren't trying to be, but uh, all right. So now we're going to grab our block. I'm gonna kind of use that little center cut as my guide there to center this. And I'm going to put a tack on each side of my ribbon. Now, there is an alternative to this. You might be saying, Rita, do I have to get this plate? No, you do not. Um, you can easily get a, um, 
I shouldn't say. Or I guess, could you use a regular plate? That I'm unsure of. Um, but the other technique that they taught us in school was to use an iron, not to make a hard crease, but to use an iron and to steam it and then finger press it. So basically not using your iron to press it, steam it with the iron and then softly finger press it. Can I say I did that? Didn't work for me. My ribbon was still kind of uneven, so I said, you know what, I'm turning to the block. To me, I feel like the steam with finger pressing might be a little bit more advanced, only because it wasn't even for me. I was like, okay, it's a soft crease, but once I put it on the brim of my hat, it wasn't even. So it was one of those techniques that I feel like you have to be a little bit more experienced. And I'm a hairstylist. When I first started doing hair, I needed a million clips in the head. I needed to section off the head and take down piece by piece and cut. Now I don't need that. As doing hair for over 20 years, I don't need any clips in the hair, barely. So I feel like the steam with finger pressing um, might I might be able to do that in the future and feel confident and have my ribbon be even on the brim, but we're going to do stick with this guide right now. All right, so shall we get back to the matter? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this ribbon on around here. Just going to stretch it. Holding it firm. If any of you guys use any alternatives to this board or uh, this this brim board or brim block, I would love to know. Okay, I'm almost at the halfway point and I feel like I need to put another pin in just to keep this tight. Okay. Woo. Okay. I um <laughs> when I put my fingers in here, I always stick myself. These things are tiny, but woo, they come for you, boy. Okay. I'm gonna stretch firmly. You want to pull. The water really helps to, I'm not turning on that water again. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not turning it on again. Oh my God. That was so funny, guys. Okay. We're just holding it taut. So this is going to overlap a little bit because you know what? I truly feel like this, the roundness of this plate is smaller, let's see, than my hat brim. It is. You see how it fits into my hat? So it's going to continue to go around here. This is just so that it swirls the way I need it to. As I'm overlapping, I'm going to take out these pins and repin it. 
Okay, I'm just wanting these two to overlap seamlessly here. Yeah. At this meeting point. Okay. Okay. Still pulling tightly until I reach the end here. That fell off. Okay. All right, so we've reached the end. Two more pins. And then I'm gonna add steam to this baby. Seal the deal. Okay, so this is our our brim, um, brim ribbon. So once you get it shaped, we will take it off and then take it off of the block and then start to sew it. It's going to look like a light's going out here, but it's not. Just can't have two things plugged up at once. This warms up and comes out a little bit slower than our water bottle. It's a common, it's a common. Okay, there we go. So we're just gonna steam this. As it's stretched. Okay, that was the first time going around. I'm gonna go around probably about three times. Make sure I get both sides. So we're going to let this dry. I could easily put my blow dryer on it, but I'm going to let it dry and we're going to come back and take it off, okay? Okay, it has completely dried and now we are removing our millinery tacks. They're really short. So it is swirled for us. You see the roundness of it? It's going to make this so much easier now for me to just put this around the brim of this hat without me fighting with it to be even on both sides. And then I can do my stitching. I'm probably going to do a nice pick stitch on this hat. Okay. 
Yeah, so you get the idea. I'm going to pin this around, but it looked so much different, right, than when I first put it up against the hat. I'm going to just, let me do a, a corner here so you could see. See how nicely it lays? And trust me, if you try to do this by hand without swirling the ribbon or without using a ribbon board, it won't look this clean. And you want all of your hats to look nice, clean, and professional. Love is in the details. All right, guys. See you next week.